Hey everyone, welcome to the Open Source Founder Podcast. Joining me today is Josh Pickford, founder of Maybe Finance. Josh, thank you so much for joining. You've taken the world by storm this year. Uh, the repository grew from zero to like 12,000 stars in a matter of a week or two. And I'm sure your life now is in a totally different place. So thank you for making the time. And before you get too bored with like going on podcasts and sharing your story. So I'd love to get started, of course, with your personal background and then how maybe got started, how we got here today. Sure, sure. Well, yeah, so thanks for having me. Um, I'm pumped to be here and uh, talk shop. Um, I So my, my personal background, I've been making stuff, building stuff for the internet for 20 years. Um, I went to school for design, but ultimately sort of self-taught on everything. And um, sort of ended up, started maybe back in 2021. Um, that was sort of coming off the heels of um, my previous company called Bear Metrics, uh, which is like a SaaS analytics company that um, I sold in 2020. Um, and then maybe was sort of, I had, I had no intention of, well, I, I guess I didn't have any specific plans post acquisition. Um, but, you know, I guess I assumed I'd built something, but, you know, I, my retirement lasted all of about like, I don't know, three or four months before I got bored. <laughs> and, uh, so I, so started working on maybe, um, after, yeah, so we had this acquisition. I, we started working with a financial advisor and I was, you know, trying to be careful to not like burn it to the ground on, um, finances. And then sort of, as I had like all the free time in the world, I could really dig in and see like, well, what does a financial advisor do? sort of realizing, oh, they're like not that special for the most part. And they certainly don't justify their like percentage of assets under management for their fees. Maybe we can build something um, for, for people to sort of self-manage all of that stuff. So that was sort of the impetus for, for maybe back in 2021. Exactly. And, and basically after the acquisition, you needed a good way to manage uh, your newfound wealth and uh, wanted to stick matters in your own hands. Absolutely. And now the... You know, the first years of, of maybe was a close source project. You build with a team and with funding, and now things have changed and it's open source. Uh, I saw on Twitter this awesome thread you shared about, you know, the realities of that experience of running um, a venture funded startup, uh, a consumer, so like fintech product where yep. usually these things don't charge, it's just like selling your data. Um, and then I'm, 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 I'm very curious to hear like first person right now, like about that experience, about like certain pitfalls that maybe other people could avoid, and then how you're looking to um, manage things differently today with uh, maybe. Yeah, so we had, we kind of went, you know, VC funded is probably not even like the right term, and we we're funded mm -hmm. ultimately, but we went the crowdfunding route. Um, right. And so we have 1,300 investors. <laughs> Um, so there's a lot of people who have put some money in. Now, some of those have put in a lot, like six figures worth of, of, of money, um, you know, up to that point, at least um, back in 2021, 2022. So the, but the, the, the sort of expectation there was, you know, your typical sort of, let's put a bunch of money in, we raise uh, or hire a bunch of people and we grow and then you end up raising like a series A, whatever, you kind of get on that, um, on that path, wheel. Yeah. Um, and so we, the sort of issue there, especially in the B2C world is that, um, it can be very expensive to acquire customers in the short term, especially in the FinTech world. Um, and so we, you know, we spent a bunch of time building this financial product and then ultimately like the runway could not support, like, we weren't growing fast enough to support the burn that we had from having a team of eight people. Uh, full time, and so uh, we had to ultimately just like strip the team down to two or three of us, and then um, ultimately decided to pivot away from that that sort of financial product that we had initially built and shut it down. Um, and and you know, for better or for worse, a lot of people find themselves in that situation. Like, quick follow up here: like, what was it like? You said you just you know you had to let people go, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, let, letting anybody go is not fun. Um, sort of the unpleasant reality of the the type of business we were building at the time. Um, so, you know, I, it's but at the end of the day, you either you have to do what you can to make the entity itself survive, right? Like we could have kept everybody on board, and then no, the not only does everybody get fired eventually, anyways, but the company itself and all of its assets and all the things that have been built 
don't exist either. So you say like, well, we have to let everybody go. And then there's a chance that the entity exists in the future. And we can then either rehire people or, you know, hire other people in the future, that kind of thing. Absolutely. And, and, you know, must have been really hard for the whole team. Now, today, running maybe right now as an open source project, I mean, first of all, if you can quickly give us a rewind of the last few weeks, and then sure. I'd love to talk about, like, you know, the team, the community, and funding, and things like yeah. that. Yeah, so um, a couple of weeks ago, I was um, not doing anything. I mean, you know, it stopped working on, on maybe itself really six months ago. And um, so I was kind of feeling a little nostalgic. We've had a, you know, we built we built a ton of, like, this really full-featured financial product, like, you know, functioning. This was some sort of like beta thing. Like we had really powerful, full featured software that, um, you know, really well designed, everybody loved, but like it was hiding behind, you know, this like private Git repo. And it's like, well, man, that would, I hate for this thing to just sit there and never see the light of day. So, uh, on a whim was just like, oh, let me just like, you know, I'll strip out the Git history, make sure we're not like giving away keys to certain, you know, environment stuff. And then put it out there and see what happens. And so did that, sent out a uh, a little tweet about it. And then, yeah, it, very quickly, you know, we went from like no, no people knowing about the Git repo to, uh, I think it's like 13,000 stars on GitHub or something today. Yeah. Like it was bonkers. And that was all within <laughs> like a week, basically. So yes. um, <laughs> yeah. So, so at that point it's like way, well, if there's that much interest, certainly there feels like that's an opportunity to, revive the business side of this right so that's when i started digging a lot more into um not just open source software obviously i've you know having been building stuff for 20 years like i've used and been involved with a lot of open source stuff but the commercial side of open source and like oh well, how can we parlay the open source part into some sort of business and uh so started spending a lot of time around that talking a lot to different people um and yeah so that's sort of now re the the not only has the software sort of like become a reality again, but the business itself is now sort of back in full swing. Absolutely. Perfect. And, and we'll get right into that uh, quick follow-up first. What do you think captured people's imagination to lead to well, this? Yeah. Sure. I, I think um, there are a couple of things. So one, the fintech world is notoriously closed, right? It's very private. Um, it's some of that's a security thing, right? Like obviously mm -hmm. nobody wants to have financial stuff just floating out for anybody to easily access. So there's a lot of that's done to keep that, um, real tight, but it's also a lot of the, the financial world, the way that it's monetized is by doing sort of less than savory things, right? So it's selling data is the, sort of the biggest way to monetize it. And so you can't, you can't be real public about that stuff because nobody likes that, right? Nobody wants their data sold and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so the fact that there was this, not only an open source, you know, financial product available, but like a full featured, fully functional, not just like, Hey, I just threw this together in the weekend over the weekend kind of thing, but you know, like a, a, a well-built full featured app that people can dig into. I think that struck a chord. And on top of that, you know, personal finance, whether you're sort of like a financial geek or not, you, you have, you, you deal with money every, that's a, it's like a topic that everyone has some sort of relationship with. Um, and so, you know, it sort of quickly strikes a, a core with people on top of that. You've got like Mint shutting down uh, mm -hmm. a couple months ago. Like there's a sort of this pent up demand, I think, for for this kind of thing. Exactly. So the stars were aligned. They did, <laughs> yes. Where, where are we going now? I mean, I'm sure top of your mind, as you said, it's been, okay, how do we revive the business? That would yep. involve funding, building out the mm -hmm. team and figuring out the sustainability and monetization side of things. So what's the status there? Yeah. So we're, um, we've got a few new, um, investors who put some money in who are All also right. like, um, on board with the long-term play here. So not just like, they're not interested or pushing for the sort of short-term, like let's do series a series b series you know g like these like 12 rounds of funding or something like that um the the belief is that you can build um not just uh, a business that can have a good exit but like a business that can be 
incredibly profitable as well. So, you know, this sort of the, one of the big upsides to open source is ultimately capital efficiency is sort of like the $3 word there, right? So um, you can build a, a, a very uh, profitable company um, that way, at least that's the belief. So that's, the, that's what we're sort of pursuing at this point and keeping the team really small as we work uh, towards that. Certainly. And, and, and I bet, you know, open sourcing, of course, can help with growing the team in the sense that you can have a contribute first approach where people are actually involved with a project first and, you know, then naturally the transition to a, a full time role uh, yep. when, when both sides want. So that's excellent. And other superpowers, of course, you know, you mentioned already, it's the, the trust and the transparency, especially for a financial uh, product that is helping here a lot. Uh, the fact that you can build it in public. And then the the community aspect of it that helps with the growth. So all the, yep. the stars aligned, the open source motion, just great catalyst on top. And so, what's the roadmap shaping like? What's 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 on your plate? What would you like? Sure. To do so a lot of it, it's around. You know, when we originally built, maybe we built it in the context of sort of much more complex infrastructure. Um, I. We had at the time we had like I don't it was something stupid like it was like four or five hundred thousand dollars worth of like credits to AWS, uh, with, but they're like startup program. But you know, that's those things expire, and so either way, so we built on top of this uh, AWS focused infrastructure that we then we've been ripping out so that it can be this much more self contained, easily to sort of easy to self host or one click deploy to Vercel or something like that. Um, so right now the focus is on rebuilding a lot of that and then also making the core product not need these uh, big data aggregators. So Plaid's sort of the classic example there. Um, that's great for a hosted option, like maybe where we're where we have you know hundreds of thousands of users who all need to connect different bank accounts. But if you're self-hosting, it's not an option just because Plaid charges massive fees so we're having to make it much more focused on at least initially um self-hosting and, and importing your own data so that's what we're working on at the moment very interesting and of course the extensibility that comes with open source can help here in terms of new connectors people contributing yep. and building for themselves what they need um absolutely and uh, on on that front as well as for general feature development uh we've algora our team we've been lucky to host you on our platform for doing bounties and so i'm really curious to hear about your experience with bounties, both the ones that you're funding yourself to drive development forward, but also letting your community members um, as well crowdfund development. So very curious what the experience has been like. And thank you. Yeah. Um, so I, one of the, the parts of you know, open sourcing this stuff is um, certainly it's giving access to people who um, have a skill set and an interest in something, but like aren't necessarily interested in like joining a company full time to contribute to it. Right. And, um, but, I, but that doesn't to me mean like free work for us. Right. Like I certainly believe that people should be compensated, um, for their time, especially if like, a co if we're going to like commercially benefit from it, um, when possible, we should offer some sort of compensation. Um, so that's sort of like the impetus for wanting to offer bounties in addition to just, helping prioritize or expedite something right so uh, especially you know a week ago or something when we were like next deep and trying to get the thing to function at all well there were certain things that needed to get done that were blocking anything else getting done so it's like okay well let's offer a bounty to say hey someone please prioritize this um, who has the skill set for it so that's that's you know sort of why we've or how we've been using bounties um i think long term um would love to you know make it a very normal sort of consistent part of our development process that's amazing and then you're leading the way right now with it so you know thank you so much for showing the example yeah. to everyone else and um how do, how do you feel about also the community you know coming in and saying hey i'd love to have this feature prioritized or what do you people think and guess what i would also be happy to to fund this as well is that something like you generally want to be open to kind of like keep it a little more controlled yeah, I mean, certainly, I I think there's a lot of value in getting community feedback on that stuff, and um, you know, we, uh, I think my role at this stage is sort of 
getting lots of community feedback and then ultimately like deciding on what to, to, to prioritize right um so that's sort of yeah that's kind of mm -hmm. how we're approaching at the moment sounds good are you are you feeling overwhelmed a little at all or sort of like are you just starstruck no i don't <laughs> not actually no not really i think the um i sort of i'm like pumped you know, <laughs> I'm like, it's super exciting. Um, and my brain, you know, just sort of naturally goes a thousand miles an hour anyways. So that's continuing and it's just, um, figuring out how to prioritize that stuff and sort of organize it. Like this morning I've been working on essentially public roadmap -y kind of things like, okay, how do I show the community? Here's what, here's what we're focusing on. Like, here's how, here's, and here's how we're prioritizing those things. And then when people say, what can I be working on? Well, then I can send them a link to like, here are the current like top priority things. Um, so to me, that's the stuff that you know I'm most excited about at the moment, and and kind of helping take the, for lack of like a better phrase, like the horde of like you know, imagine, um, yeah, it's just this massive group of people working on something and kind of pointing it in different directions. Exactly. Uh, something about the workflow we could add here for people who currently contribute or are new to contributing to maybe in terms of, uh, you know, looking through the issues, maybe creating a draft PR, how they bring about the propositions or following up to existing. Um, these features, yeah. What's the workflow? Yeah, you sure. It's, um, you know, check the, the um, I just, I mean, literally this morning have been like reorganizing everything into GitHub projects and then milestones. So it's checking Sweet. out those, seeing what's what's sort of the current top priority, and if you can, focus on those things. Uh, or it's go through the issues and look by, you know, I've, I've tried to categorize things by front end and back end and bugs and all that kind of stuff. So take your skill set, check out some of the stuff that's there and see if there's a spot for you to jump in. Or if, you, if there's, you know, something you want that doesn't exist, if there's not an issue for it, then post an issue for it and, you know, the community will jump in and have some feedback for you. Sounds great. Uh, going back to your previous topic about, uh, you know, monetization and sustainability of the project. At the moment, are there specific pathways forward uh, that you're considering something you could share with people? Yeah, so we'll, um, the goal will be offering a hosted version of maybe essentially what we did before. Um, mm -hmm. And the monetization side of that becomes obviously the, the ease of hosting is a, a big part of that. But, you know, going back to the sort of data aggregators like Plaid, um, the reality is that won't, for the vast majority of people, that won't be an option to have a data aggregator locally. Um, you know, in the U.S., Teller has been the one that we've been using a lot um, most recently to sort of help people import their bank data. But the reality is like that doesn't exist, especially on a global sort of scale. Um, so a hosted maybe option will be include with it the ability to just one click sort of connect your bank accounts and be done with it. Um, so that's sort of the path to monetization for us is, is that kind of stuff. And then we've got a whole separate B2B component with sort of all the all the stuff that we build for maybe essentially mm -hmm. turning that into sort of B2B fintech APIs for uh, other businesses to to pay for usage on. So that's sort of the, the two categories. Uh, that, sounds, that sounds very cool. Uh, any, anything additional we could add maybe about this uh, B2B side of things here, how that might evolve? And I understand it's early, right? Uh, but but before you also had uh, a mapped out version of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, there, that's still. I mean, the re the reality is we'll probably at least a few months out on even having mm -hmm. first versions of that kind of stuff. Uh, figuring out what sort of the most impactful things to to release. You know, I, there's stuff like um, transaction sanitization, right? So when you look at a bank statement, and it's like this cryptic set of abbreviations and whatnot onto your bank statements like turning that into human readable stuff um stock market data that kind of thing so just a bunch of different little bits that you put into a single suite of fintech tools absolutely uh that sounds uh sounds great actually and uh maybe we could actually jump into the demo section i mean before that is there something additional you could uh, you might like to add right now in terms of your experience so far maybe any, any, any pitfall you faced, uh, you avoided, or some advice to other people? You know, I, I think a lot of it's just people overthink it. Um, obviously, you have to be careful with when you're open sourcing something. Um, you know, we get the whole like licensing things and whatnot. But I mean, the, um, 
I think a lot of people hold on really tight to their code as though it's the code itself is somehow magical. Um, and you know, for some, in some cases it is, but for, I think for most people, if you can, you know, having something be open source and that other people can contribute to, um, can be a positive thing. I don't know, case by case, but, um, for us, obviously it's been, it's been pretty nice. And, and, and maybe it helps when you don't have much to lose. That's right. If, if you were already uh, shutting things down, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. But, uh, but no, 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 thank you. Uh, I, think, I think a lot of people uh, will be, I mean, ourselves included, actually, are looking at this and, and, and it helps with an already existing consideration of like, when's the right time for us? Like, what's left before I, we can take a leap? Right. I, you know, I think, um, I think it's one of those things, like if, if we had open sourced this, um from the start i don't know that we would have had the same sort of interest right like there are i've seen multiple sort of personal finance uh open source projects but they're like very early stage um or they've been around forever but like nothing's really took off like the fact that we dropped this fully functional full featured financial app out of nowhere um i think was probably the reason that it really took off um you know as instead of a like let's build this thing from scratch together like nah, it's a separate thing but like the fact that we dropped again like, my tweet was like here's what a million dollars worth of fintech exactly. software looks like like that people are like oh dang so like that's a that, um, <laughs> the headline is what sold it i think totally um yeah. quick quick side note here about twitter and social media in general the way uh you have experienced your presence there maybe for people who are not that active, uh, urging them to do it or giving them a piece of advice. And even kind of like if you could recommend people that you personally follow or find entertaining that other people could check out. Mm, I, I mean, God, I've been on um, Twitter for ever. Uh, I don't know. Since I think it was 2007. So I've been around a long time. And with Bear Metrics, like we were also, I was very public about, um, like we shared our whole, all our financials and stuff publicly so that's kind of been my shtick for the better part of close to 10 years um i i think there are pros and cons to being you know there's this sort of like i think now it's like the build in public sort of movement is mm -hmm. sort mm -hmm. of how it's categorized but i mean um there are pros and cons to that i don't think that inherently just posting numbers is all that valuable um i think it's when you've got some sort of story to tell or that it's beneficial to your customers or something like that. Like, and I think the case of maybe it's like, Oh, a, a transparent financial company. Like that's a, that's a, that's a rarity. Right. Um, so for us, that's sort of a selling point, but I don't know that just being open for open sake is all that valuable. Um, but I do think sharing with people uh, builds a community, right. Of other people to interact with. And um so I don't know pros and cons. We do whatever you want, kind of thing. Yeah, to its his own, but it definitely helps. Right, business forward, absolutely. Um, in our transition to the demo section, maybe we could either start with the repository and then move forward to the app, or do it the other way around. Up to you. Um, let's see how the screen sharing working. As as we've been chatting, I've been trying to get. We've been, you know, I think we've had like two hundred commits in the past, like few days and i'm trying to like update it locally and make sure that i can get this thing <laughs> functioning um hold on one second here let's see there we go so there's this is yes the, the repo itself um yeah i mean you know i i think this is um i have my, my background is not in like react and so um i've been i'm a rails guy uh at my core so um, my understanding is this is re uh, relatively typical <laughs> of a sort of React Next.js um, app, but I think the biggest things here um, we've sort of had this mono repo and then broken it down into these individual apps. Um, most most of the sort of interesting stuff happens in the client, um, and that's where like all the at least user facing stuff happens. Uh, I wonder actually if you, you might, uh, if you're considering our own live streaming, kind of like, you know, when you're working on the well, day. Well, that's, I mean, yeah. So I, 
Um, personally, it would be uninteresting for me to live stream because I'm not doing much coding on this. Um, it's uh, there's everybody else is doing most of the coding at this stage. Um, um, maybe other people could record themselves. Or maybe like so contributing to maybe right. Sure, I've thought about um, us doing in the, like our Discord having mm -hmm. you know essentially like people jumping in and like either pair programming or just streaming while they're working on issues this could be kind of interesting for sure. Yeah, it's something to watch for sure. Yeah. Um, sweet. So you know, everyone who hasn't already, uh, hop over and give a start to the repo. Take the app for a spin. Give your feedback. Check out the open issues. Maybe submit a pull request. And yeah. without further ado, maybe we can jump into the app demo. Yeah, let me switch over to that. All right, there we go. So this is um this is what you see. Like I I just right before we hopped on registered um like put in my name and email address um to create an account so this is like our onboarding what you would see um for onboarding so um then you kind of pick this stuff and, and some of this is left over from um one of the features that we had early on was called ask the advisor which we had like a personal financial advisor that you was paired with your account a human um so we've pulled some of that out um however these things also sort of give context to what your goals are, kind of what you're working towards, and will pre-populate certain parts of the app. So absolutely yeah. personalize the experience. If we could give an extra zoom here, just so that everything. Oh sure. Yep. There we go. Yeah, that's perfect. Better. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. Um, so this is the point where if you have a bank connector like a teller or a plat or whatever, it, you could start connecting accounts. Um, this, these kind of things ultimately set onboarding um, things, which I'll show in a second here. Um, but it helps us sort of give you a checklist of, oh, you need to go add these accounts. Oh, you need to go add that asset or something like that. Um, let's see. Something. There we go. So. Yeah, so that's the onboarding. Very neat so far. Yeah. Um, so then so what some of that onboarding does is, you know, gives you this getting started of like, here are the things that you need to do based on what accounts you told us that you have. Um, so at this stage, you know, you would go through, um, yeah, and this, this I think triggers Teller. So that's how that would import stuff. Now what you can do, um, just say like we'll say checking it. So um and that'll go ahead and fill in some of this stuff. Um let me add one more thing and then I'll show you mm -hmm. yeah, one other thing that what this fills out. Yeah. Um, those postal codes are. So, so. Okay. Um, so, so then, you know, you can add a bunch of that stuff um, and then go into, this is sort of like a retirement planner that's generated automatically for you based on the assets that you've added and like the typical growth rate of those different types of assets. This automatically pulls all the, this kind of stuff and then you can go in and add different life events and um, that kind of stuff and just see like, okay, I'm planning on retiring at this age. Will I run out of money at a certain point? That kind of thing. Um, so a lot of the, there's a ton of stuff that exists when you start adding lots of different accounts. So investment accounts, showing return and being able to compare them to the S&P 500 and things like that. So, but that's what we're in the middle of getting functioning now is like the foundations there, but previously we were using Plaid to import all that data. So now we have to rebuild how you get all the data in there. Um, and that's sort of what we're in the middle of. I yeah, think. I think there's an educational element as well with a lot of these things. 
Sure. Yeah, so can... yeah, for instance, you can click on pretty much anything, and we've we've got a whole um, yeah a thing that using your data plugs in to like kind of tell you what that is, why that matters, how to affect it. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. So there's this sort of, we call this like the educational sidebar um, where you can kind of learn more about any given number or chart or anything like that. And then planning or maybe like some, th some goals or maybes that you said in the beginning. Yeah, um, yeah. So this is some of that stuff where you can say like, you could drop in like, okay, here I want to, you know, um, let's say buy a vacation home. And I want to spend a million dollars on it. Um, we'll say. So that tells me that's a bad idea. <laughs> at least at that, based on everything that it, that everything that it knows, right? Like, because uh, there's no income here. I have I haven't imported anything that implies I have income. Exactly. So it's saying based on what you currently have, and then you just all of a sudden spend a million bucks. Like that's not going to work out great for you. Yeah, so, your plan is failing. Just don't do but, it. Right. Yeah. You know, and we'll try to make that clear. I love it. Um, so love yes, that's the kind of like planning for those maybes. And and some of the stuff that we want to build is around um, scenario planning, but like comparing scenarios. So let's try the, let's have three different options. Well, what if I retire at this age? Or what if I start this business? Or what if I draw down more from retire? Like there's all sorts of different these scenarios and being able to compare the outcomes of them is, a, you know, one of the things that we had sort of started on, but never got to make put into production um so and my bet, yeah, my bet is that you're using this yourself for you know for your own sure. needs uh if, if for you sure I, the demo, yeah. it, it came into my mind like using this actually for maybe the business um yeah i think there's um there is probably an argument to be made um about like future future products like having a maybe for business kind of thing that's um even almost like a replacement for like intuits you know quickbooks that kind of thing i don't know about necessarily bookkeeping this like but maybe higher level business stuff i don't know maybe <laughs> maybe um but you know back to those scenarios and, and planning and whatnot yeah. for example you could map out your runway and then see if i hire a new person that's how the burn sort of like evolves yeah. and that's how everything's going to be affected uh, projected over time and so on. So that's the thing that came to my mind looking at it, and I'm like, oh, Josh is probably going to be using it for maybe the business as well because sure. it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's that's super interesting. Anything that we have left out, haven't covered so far? Probably not at this stage of the of the product. I mean, you know, again, it's like a lot of what we're working on at the moment, sort of a week and a half out of making this thing public, is uh, getting it sort of back to being fully functional um so it's i would say it has it is not back to its um former glory yet <laughs> but it will be uh, in the next couple of weeks and uh you know certainly i hope we have the opportunity to maybe repeat this later down the line maybe this year sure. to see how everything has come together as well as get more advice and experience from you um leading the project this yep. was uh, it was excellent. Really appreciate it. I know you're super busy right now. Uh, so thank you for making the time. Any last remarks? I don't think so. I appreciate what, what you guys are doing with like making bounties super easy. Um, you know, I, you. I, as I started looking at all that stuff early on, it's like you guys are sort of the obvious use case or, or tool to use. And um, yeah, it's been great and nice to not have to think about the infrastructure to like set up our own bounties and all that stuff. So I appreciate um, it. It's a, it's a privilege serving you. Yeah. It really is. So thank you so much.